One of the best things you could do to make your NPRC drag car faster is to take care of your batteries. Not just these batteries, but things like this. Most definitely things like this. In this video, we're gonna talk about charging, storage, cycling, all that kind of good stuff. My name is Chad, this is the Dorky M40 RC channel, and we're gonna make you faster today. So we pay a lot of money for these batteries, guys. You know, 150, 175, who knows how much batteries are gonna be this year. And the most important thing you are going to want to do to these batteries is you are going to want to cycle these things as often and as much as you can. We already do a lot of damage to these batteries by just literally knocking off a tenth, two tenths of a couple volts and then charging them back up as fast as we can to get ready for the next round. So when you get home for the week, what you want to do is you want to first thing is cycle these things. We'll talk about a little bit of stuff that you should also do in between long stents and also in between race weeks. So a couple things is you always want to make sure that your GNSS battery is topped off. That's a given. These things go bad. You can replace the batteries in these, but they are getting very difficult to find. I just went and looked for one myself actually for this one because I think the battery on it is toast and that is unfortunate. I've been racing in the off season at the indoor track, so my sand was good, but I always like to make sure that it is topped off. Luckily, you can get replacement batteries for these easily. But now let's get into the real meat and potatoes. And the most important thing I could probably talk about first is this thing right here, and that is safety. Now, everybody I'm sure has your regular vinyl LiPo charging bag. I encourage you to do some research on YouTube and see exactly how protective those things are. Not really. What I have here is one of my bat safes. These things come in multiple different sizes, small, medium, and large. This is the medium version here, and I also have a large one. I've been flying FPV quads for years. I've known a few people that have had house fires, and no matter how many times I go searching through this house, there's a battery laying right here unattended. I always want to try to keep everything in here. These things are super nice and sturdy. Now, they are still going to fill your house up with smoke if something happens. But the most important thing is if you put these things next to on a concrete surface, not next to anything flammable, then you're not going to have as bad as day as if your batteries were just laying anywhere and just spontaneously combusted. So definitely consider getting one of these links in the description below. And if you guys feel that you've got some kind of value out of this video, please leave a like or a comment below. I also have Amazon affiliate links below to a lot of this stuff that you see here that will help out the channel greatly. And if you just wanna buy me a beer, there's a paypal.me link below as well. Now, when it comes to cycling your battery, there's a couple different ways to do it. I use a separate discharger. This is kind of a small one and a slow one. It actually only discharges, I think, around seven to eight amps, which is pretty slow. Uh, most of your battery chargers will discharge a lot faster, but depending upon the size and the wattage, like I have this nice small one that I take with me everywhere. It's actually my main charger as well. It came from the FPV days. These things are made by many different brands. ISDT, this is a Hoda. It's got the thing where you can just uh, lay your phone on top of it and it'll go ahead and charge. What is that called again? You can run it off XT60, so I'll basically just take like a big uh, 10,000 milliamp 4S pack or something, plug into this, and usually it'll charge me up and stuff all day. This has got dual ports, so I can charge my car battery at the same time as I'm topping off the batteries for things like my heaters. I pick up the cheapest like two or three S heater batteries that I can off of Amazon because you're literally just pounding those things constantly. And I usually go through uh, probably one or two of those every month and a half to two if I'm really out there racing and practicing a lot. So you don't really need to spend hundreds of dollars on a big charger. Something like this works just perfect for our application. I make longer charge leads and stuff so I can just leave the battery in the car and just hook everything up to it. And it's real simple and easy and it just doesn't get much better than that. Now, when it comes to discharging, again, I mentioned this is an ISDT discharger. They do make bigger versions and I'll link to one of those in the description below that will discharge your battery a lot faster than this one does but it's a simple process. All you do, it's just a big heat sink with a fan, and all you do is just plug in your connector there, 
and then we take the battery we plug in said battery and we literally just hit the button it's going to auto detect that there's two cells on here and it is going to discharge it down to a storage voltage of course we don't want that here while we're on the bench making a video now do we so we will do that off camera what you want to do is you want to discharge your battery completely down you want to charge it back up all the way and then do that again. Do that maybe two to three times if you have the time throughout the day or a couple nights. As soon as I get home from a race and I'm unpacking my gear, I have this sitting outside in my garage on my bench and I immediately just start discharging my batteries so that way I can get them going back. Now, when I get to the point where I want to put it into a charge, in a storage state, you want to charge to a storage voltage, which is about 3.8, 3.7, some people will argue, but these batteries, you never want to leave them fully charged and you never want to leave them fully dead. That is one thing that they will hate and it will bring down the internal resistance and it will not make them last. Now, when you're doing things like discharging batteries and stuff as well, it's always a good time to like go over and make sure that your battery isn't puffed, that it's in good condition. All your connectors are good and solid. If you've done any recent soldering that you're not too sure about, you want to go over that kind of stuff. I'll put a link to my recent soldering video up here that is very helpful, I think, and shows you all the stuff that I use, flux being the key. So it's really not rocket science, but it's something that if you take care of these batteries, not only are you going to put more money in your pocket and save things, but you also are going to be able to go faster, longer on these batteries as well. Now I could sit and talk about this for another five to 10 minutes for some YouTube analytics, but that just wouldn't be right because I think I've covered it all in a nutshell. I will put a link to a video that I did about batteries, comparing this one and some Max Amps batteries in the description below and there'll be a card popping up to it right now. We're gonna see leaps and bounds, I'm sure in batteries this year. This probably right now is a 6,400 milliamp battery. I would bet by the end of the year, we are gonna be running something maybe even twice this size. So it should be pretty exciting. Gonna do it guys, thanks a lot as always, peace.